Good morning. Today is February 4th, 2021. It is a Thursday. There is a word that the Lord has shared with me today, and I want to share it with you all. Heavenly Father, we're coming to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for the blood of the Lamb. We thank you for the atoning blood. We thank you for the saving blood. We thank you for the sanctifying blood. We thank you for that blood is the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God. We thank and praise you this morning. We are so glad to be able to come and gather around the scriptures. Holy Spirit, have your way. Hide me. Get me out of the way. And you have your way. Anoint these lips of clay and give me what to say to your most great a people. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Thank God and amen. It is 2 Corinthians chapter 6 beginning at verse 14 through verse 18. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what does righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony, what harmony is there between Christ and Belial? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will live with them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. God is so great. He is so amazing. This word is a true word. This word is a word of warning. The words that have been coming forth this week have been words of warning, words of wisdom, words that are coming straight from the throne room because the whole book of the Bible is the throne. It is Jesus Christ made flesh. The word became flesh and the word dwelt among us. And that was in the embodiment of Jesus Christ. The Lord wants us to come from idolatry. There's many forms of idolatry. There's statues of idolatry. There's things that we erect in our heart, such as um, material things. Uh, sometimes we even put our children before God and we make our children idols. We put them on pedestals. Sometimes we'll put our husband or our wives on pedestals. We'll do all types of things to have idolatry. And the Lord is saying, no, that shall not be so. I'm God. I'm first. I'm the first. I'm the last. I'm, I'm the beginning. I'm the ending. I'm the alpha and the omega. This is a message this morning. This is a message that we must walk in the righteousness of Christ. We wear the cloak of righteousness, which is Christ's righteousness. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. There's nothing good in us. Somebody told Jesus when he was walking on the earth, oh, master, master, you're so good. He said, who are you talking about is good? I'm, I'm not good. The one, the father in heaven is good. Glorify him. And this is Jesus who was perfect. We cannot be self-righteous. We have to come from self-righteousness. There's no righteousness in us, but we are the righteous seed of God when we are born again through Christ Jesus. When we wear his robe of righteousness, that's how we are made righteous. We've got to rightly divide the word and get it real correct and not think in our flesh, but by his spirit. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. How can two walk together unless they agree? You cannot be unequally yoked. You're saved. You're filled with the Holy Spirit, but you want to join up with those that don't believe in God, do not love God, are haters of God. You're unequally yoked. If you're trying to hang out with folks that are unbelievers, you're going to have a war constantly. It just does not work. You're going to have to disconnect from people, places, and things. You cannot walk with unrighteous. You just can't. You cannot walk with those who do not have a love for the Lord. It will be a battle for you. Believe me. Been there. Done that. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? There are people walking in the dark and they, they love to live in the dark. They love to sin. They love to cuss, use foul language. They love to do all the things that are against the word of God. They revel and they relish in doing dark, evil, wicked deeds. What business do you have doing with them if you have the light of Christ in your heart? Because I'm going to tell you something, that light that's in you, 
The darkness does not comprehend it. And those folks that are in the dark, they do not like you because your light is convicting them. You're not the one convicting them. It's just the Holy Spirit that's in you that's convicting them. Your light shines on their sin. And see, sin doesn't like to be exposed to the light. Sin wants to stay in the dark. Sin wants to hide. You cannot be yoked with those that are walking in the dark. I'm talking to somebody today. Whenever this video is watched, whoever watches it at the time that they watch it, it's going to minister to your mind and to your heart because the Holy Spirit is only using me as a vessel to reach you. So you cannot walk with those that are in the dark. What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? Belial is a devil. What, what, what harmony, what connection is Christ and Belial? There, that, that, there's no such thing. Jesus, help us today. People are actually mixing that. Mixing Jesus with Belial. That's a strong deception. That's not the Lord. That's not the word. That is not Christ. You got to try the spirit by the word of God. You got to test the spirit by the spirit, the Holy Ghost spirit. Be careful. It says, or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? You see there? It says right here, what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? You're not a believer and I'm trying to walk with you. It's not going to work. You're going to save yourself a lot of headache when you when you separate from the unbeliever and, and bring in fellowship with those who believe like-mindedness like-mindedness. What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? The temple of God is holy. Don't you know there was a time that, glory to God, there was a time that they put the Ark of the Covenant next to this statue called Dagon and Dagon kept falling and falling apart and falling apart and falling apart because he could not stand to be next to the Ark. He couldn't stand it. Glory to God. My video is ending. I'm going to come right back on to finish. I'm coming right back to finish. To God be the glory.